Welcome to the Cat Power Podcast, where we deliver powerful insights into the world of Caterpillar oil and gas, showcasing the latest in technological advancements and highlighting the stories of the industry's most dynamic leaders. I'm your host, Sergio Tijera. Now let's get ready to power up with the Cat Power Podcast. And welcome to the Cat Power Podcast. My name is Sergio Tijera. You can catch each and every episode on your favorite podcast platform, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, of course, YouTube as well. If you've been enjoying these episodes and we've been entertaining you, make sure to give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and definitely hit the bell icon so that you get notified and don't miss an episode when they drop. So today, my guest is Will Curtin, and he's the oil and gas product specialist at Caterpillar in Houston. So we're here talking about some really important topics around batteries and the drilling industry. So welcome, Will. Yeah, thank you, Sergio. Thanks for having me on today. Fantastic. So, you know, having a, a successful business in drilling is obviously very important and you're reliant on a lot of technologies. So drilling, we know, needs a constant uh, source of power. Tell me a little bit about some of the uh, some of the problems that have been facing the industry over the years when it comes to providing consistent and reliable power. Yeah, so so you need a, a dense mobile power solution um, that that can be easily relocated, and, and you know traditionally that has been uh, diesel generators. Uh, and but the you know big challenge on on that front has been operating cost. Um, and and as oil has you know gone through its ups and downs, uh, a lot of the drilling industry has been under some pretty severe pricing pressure. To, to reduce its operating cost. And particularly uh, one of the areas that they've been trying to review that with is, is on those diesel generators and, and how they can, uh, you know, the most popular alternative that a lot of different other industries are using today is natural gas. So the, the, a big focus has been on how, how do we switch to natural gas? And, and part of that has been such a challenge because the, power demand that that drillers put on generators is, is very demanding with uh, a lot of frequent load spikes that that gas generators traditionally struggle with, um, as well as a mix of sometimes a, a lot of low load time and a lot and with brief periods at high loads. So overall, it becomes it's a pretty challenging when you put all those different criteria um, into into a single application and, and try to find a power solution for it. Yeah, so maintaining that consistent power that it needs exactly when it needs it is critical because that you're talking, you know, you're talking dollars and cents whenever whenever you have those spikes or drops, if you can even that out and provide that predictable power upon demand, that makes a huge difference to profitability in the, the bottom line. And and it's keep in mind it's the essential essentialness of that is also on safety. Uh, a lot of these drill rigs are are an island application where they're um, you cannot have re reliably there will not be grid power due to you know you're you're at a brand new well site there may not be utility poles or lines out there. So if if something happens to cause the generators to go offline, the entire rig could lose power, and that that's a pretty huge safety concern too. Wow. So now that, you know, some, some companies then are moving to, to gas generators, which have, have its benefits, but doesn't have that ability to respond as quickly. Tell mm -hmm. me how batteries then are playing a key role in that. Yeah. So, so battery systems are kind of, uh, as I'll say, filling in the gap between that, that performance gap that diesel generators versus natural gas generators have, have traditionally caused a problem for for the industry. So when when viewing now is is using a natural gas generator, they, you know, can provide the the amount of power that you need it. The challenge comes from when uh, drillers put a unexpected large amount of electrical demand on the generators, the natural gas can't respond fast enough to get that power to to the rig. Um, which then causes, uh, you know, your voltage and your frequency to go out of bounds and, and the rig can black out. Batteries uh, essentially fill that niche of saying, well, a battery can provide uh, relatively instantaneous power compared to the generator and, and allow you to, for that short period of time, um, whether it be a few seconds or a few minutes, depending on the exact situation, provide that power to the drill rig while either you wait for that load spike to, to go away and you don't need that uh, electricity anymore, 
or you bring another generator online since this is going to be a more sustained change in, in what the drill rig is doing. And, you know, b battery technology has obviously evolved uh, over the years in, in tremendous ways. So what is what is CAT doing in terms of, of batteries and, and this technology to stay ahead of the game? Yeah, so a lot of it is, um, you know, you're correct in saying that batteries are a, a vastly changing landscape right now, right? We're, we're using batteries in every aspect of our lives, right? Cell phones, cars, and, and now it's really spreading to that heavy equipment industry that, you know, Caterpillar is is in. The, the I would say the, the real focus for us has been in a lot of this, how do we apply this technology into a, a very harsh environment? Right. When we typically think of, of batteries, right, they're in your cell phones, which, you know, stay in our pockets, don't drop them. It, it's a very gentle application compared to now you're going out into an oil field. There's you're taking uh, these are on rough roads, trucks and, you know, the uh, environment's also not as nice if whether you're in West Texas and it's, uh, you know, the summer Pretty temperatures <laughs> it well, dusties and the heat is, is, a, is probably the biggest thing out there. Um, but also compare that to then there's uh, Appalachia up in Pennsylvania and northern Canada, where now you have winter as well, right? Where it's going to be negative 20, negative 30, wow. and, and you still need the same performance in both sites. How does, how does it work in terms of the energy density, in terms of, you know, how it powers, uh, how it maintains the power and then, and then, uh, and then providing it out there? Mm -hmm. So that is all managed by... Caterpillar's power management system. Um, it is all basically tied together through our, our control system where we're, we're paying attention to the load that the drill rig is basically asking of the generators and, and determining what is the best or what is the most optimal way to run your generators as well as charging and discharging the batteries. Because generators run more are optimized for certain load points right we want our generators to be as most efficient when they're providing as the, their maximum amount of power sure and so if we can run say one generator at 80 percent of its maximum power that's better than running two generators at 40 percent if um if you get my example right and so if we only need some of that power for the drill rig, we can use that extra power and start charging the batteries and then keep other generators offline, which is part of that whole, what we kind of mentioned in the beginning of reducing um, fuel cost and operational costs is you're actually running some of your generators less because you can rely on that battery to provide that, <clears throat> that initial startup uh, power while you get another generator online instead of always having to keep it running in case it's needed. Right, so it reduces your owning and operating costs because you're not having to run those extra extra sets and run uh, gas or, or diesel through them. How long do these batteries typically last? Uh, current, I would say currently we're we're expecting ten to fifteen years on out of the batteries, um, and I the system monitors their their battery health. So so if there were any issues or anything in there, the system's going to start notifying you of, of battery issues. And do these require a, a lot of maintenance or are they just kind of set it and forget it? They're, um, the, the, to be honest, the most amount of maintenance they require is making sure that the air conditioning system that's located with them is properly functioning. Um, you know, batteries do produce heat, which, which is unfortunately one of the, the energy loss ports of, of a battery right. system. So uh, basically ensuring that the air conditioning and which is a heating and cooling system is, is functioning is, is the biggest single maintenance item on, on the entire battery system, which is, which, as you mentioned, it's a pretty significant reduction compared to, if you think about all the maintenance oil and everything that goes into, into an engine. Oh, of course. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just a fraction of that in, in these locations, I would imagine, you know, having less gen sets running provides a quieter environment too, right. For, for operators and, mm -hmm surrounding uh, workers and so forth. Is that a, a good feature, a great selling point? You know, things that customers are asking for as well, the ambient noise? Definitely in some of the areas that are, are closer to urban areas, right? Uh, particularly right. out in, in, maybe not so much West Texas, but in Den the DJ Basin out in Colorado, um, the, the 
quietness, I guess you could say, of of being able to make that drill rig easier to put in uh, in a more busy area definitely is a benefit. And then, you know, obviously for the environment, you know, having less gensets running, even though they provide very clean power, there's probably nothing cleaner than a battery, right? Or, or close to that. Oh, exactly. Right. If, yeah. if you can the reduce your actual fuel consumption um, in, in the end, right, you're, you're not burning any hydrocarbons. So that, that definitely is a emissions benefit for, for anyone that's utilizing these systems, as well as, you know, as I mentioned, it, 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 the batteries, you know, the, the batteries themselves are not the um, magic power solution, right? That's powering the rig. The, the true power for the rig is still coming from generators. Right. We're just using them in a more optimal way, but it's, allow, it's because of a battery, it's allowing you to go from a diesel generator system to a natural gas system. Right, and, and yeah. reap all those benefits. Of an enabler. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh, fantastic. So, yeah, batteries, like you said, are are continuing to develop and and uh, become more efficient, provide better energy density. You know, we're seeing that in every in every industry, right? From from automobiles to everything. What do you what do you see as the future for batteries at Caterpillar? You know, and, and not only in this application, but in in in, in many others. Do you see that? Um, not taking over, but taking mm -hmm. a, a larger role in a lot of power, you know, supply uh, solutions. Yeah. So I, I think the the future is really going to start shifting to how do we continue to integrate with batteries as, as a system enabler, right? To date, like I said, we've, we've done the shift from diesel to natural gas. Um, but the the future of this is starting to look at well how else can these batteries start to facilitate um technology right so what what that could look for for one um could be i would say you know potential for alternative fuels could be in there uh the, but i would say the bigger option that's out there it deals with utility and grid power so mm -hmm. it it's for obvious reasons if you can have the utility or you know the you know, the national electrical grid providing your electricity, that's, that's a pretty substantial benefit in terms of, and, and again, in terms in emissions compared to a, a local engine or, uh, and also they're very cost competitive. The, the challenge though, as we all know, is that the grid has, is one under a lot of electrical strain these days as, as electrical demand keeps increasing all over the, all from everywhere. But, but also is, is how prices fluctuate throughout the day, right? The, the price that you're paying at uh, 2, like 3 p.m. In the, in the afternoon in Texas when everyone's Ooh. running their air conditioner is a lot different than what you're paying at 2 a.m. Uh, at night. So you, allowing batteries to start, you know, shifting where your electrical costs actually come from, you know, if I charge my battery up at night and then start using it during the day in the afternoon, it, starting to facilitate those types of, you know, I almost say power strategies mm -hmm. is, is really where, where batteries are going to start to enable people to think outside the box and, and change how they're providing power to their application. And that's really the, the holy grail, right? Is, is finding that optimal level of peak performance and lowest cost and efficiency at all times and doing it in a way that's, that's automatic, right? That you're just monitoring uh, you know, the, the loads monitoring and, and strategically selecting, okay, where am I going to get my power from at, at the lowest cost and, and at the level I need it. Exactly. And again, it continues to facilitate as you're able to have a more uh, dynamic selection of where your power is coming from and how you're managing it. It allows you to diversify your sources that you're providing it from. So um, I think the the long term, you know, as you said, a holy grail for a lot of ESG goals that a lot of companies are starting to to target is, you know, how can I reduce my my carbon? Well, if you're able to, for instance, purchase renewable electricity from the grid, and and then use that in conjunction with the battery, as I as I was kind of just describing, that's a potential path that could could really lead to um, some companies yeah, meeting their good. ESG targets. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. You guys are doing some amazing things in the battery space. And, and what I love about Caterpillar is that they're always thinking ahead and thinking about what's one way that I can get 1%, 2%, 3% better, because over time, that adds up, right? Like ounces make pounds. And so we want to continually focus on that for our customers. Mm -hmm. 
It definitely, it, it is definitely becoming a, a um, you know, in this in this power space with batteries and and power generation, it really is becoming a you know a game of percents, right? As the these small percent gains are one have, as you mentioned, added up over time, and and now we're you know they're making big differences. Where if you can get a few percent here and a few percent there, that can make a big difference for for a lot of people. Fantastic. So, Will, where where can people find out more about this uh, new technology? Yes, yeah, so, uh, best place to, to find new would be on um, cat.com, where you can go and find any information about uh, all of our products and, and all of our services. All right, my friend, this has been great. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to like and subscribe and share it with a colleague that needs to hear it. We're always thinking about ways to improve your operations, make them more efficient, more profitable. And uh, be sure to catch this and other episodes of the Cat Power podcast as we continue to provide you with the latest and greatest info and insights in the industry. So thanks, Will. I appreciate you being on. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please follow and rate us and be sure to share it with a friend so that you can power up their life and their career.